And I'm now joined by an Australian journalist and filmmaker who fled last week, Daisy Gedeon. Daisy, thank you for joining me and sharing your experiences. Firstly, how are you going and what can you tell me about your journey to get out? Um, can't say that I'm at all happy. I'm uh, very devastated and uh, very worried about the people of Lebanon and uh, any Australians that remain there. The journey to get out was quite difficult. Um, we knew that Israel was intending to, you know, come in in a heavy way. We got uh, notice um, and advice that we should leave. So we spent about eight hours uh, using three different travel agents to try and secure a flight. And uh, finally, uh, late Tuesday night, we got a flight on Wednesday. And it's, um, I know Middle East Airlines is still trying to get people out, but it's the last airlines that's operating out of Beirut. And so we fled Wednesday night um, and came to Dubai. And I'm just waiting it out here to see if things calm down. And otherwise, I, I really don't think it's going to calm down. I think we've just seen over the last 24 hours, despite the assassination of Nasrallah, that things are getting worse. So I might be heading home very soon. How quickly did you have to pack up your things and go? And what was that like for you to have to get out that quickly? Oh, it was shocking. I mean, I'm set up, I'm based there, and I didn't know what I was going to be taking. I had what do I take for two weeks, five months? I'm not sure how long this is going to last. So I basically had to close up my house, empty my fridge, turn off all the electricity, every, you know, everything, gas, everything that you, it was, yeah, it was disturbing. I was not thinking clearly, but I had to think very, you know, logically about what, what the situation was going to be for me was I coming back in two weeks. So I've packed mm -hmm. So much stuff, um, but it was sad, you know, doing it like feeling forced to leave um, my home and having to disrupt my life and up, you know, uproot it for I'm not sure how long. So it's it's you know definitely disappointing and very saddening. And given the situation that has unfolded over the past 24 hours and this warning that things are about to escalate. What, can you give us a sense of what it would be like to be just a regular person on the ground in Beirut? Have you been able to speak to anyone? Definitely, yeah. We're constantly in contact with family and relatives there and um, they're sending me, they're saying, thank God you left. It hasn't stopped the bombardment. They're in Beirut. They're just constant bombardment by Israel. I mean, you know, they're... People are continuing to flee. There's no homes for people. There's hundreds of thousands of refugees on the roads and on, on in parks, in you know empty areas in lands because there's just not enough accommodation. People are, uh, you know, this government has had to have to open up the schools, but still, we've been and I've been asked particularly to try and help um, raise awareness and also to generate um, bedding, mattresses diapers, formula, food, some sort of support, because there are literally hundreds of thousands of people who are homeless at the moment within their own country. And so, you know, and then you've got thousands of people now who've been killed, maybe up to 2,000 people being killed now. We don't know after the last bombing um, of Dahia, the southern suburb of Beirut, that caught, killed Nasrallah, how many people are actually dead um, and just thousands um, injured, the hospitals are, are, are overwhelmed. Um, so, you know, my family, my friends, um, they're just, they don't know, they're, they're grateful that we're out, but we're feeling very privileged that we're out. Even leaving was very difficult, looking at the people working at the airport who were saying, you know, God bless you, God be with you, and you're just thinking, God be with you, you know, you're yeah. stuck, you know, you can't leave, it's... Um, harrowing for a lot of people and just not knowing what's going to happen it's not over like what more do they want like israel's assassinated every every you know member of the elite uh command of hezbollah including you know nasrallah the the, the general security general of the of hezbollah and why have they continued to con bomb Lebanon, all the areas of Lebanon, not just um, southern Lebanon and the Bekaa, but Beirut is still constantly being bombed and you just wonder what is their ultimate objective because if it's not assassinating the leader, is it really the intention of, you know, occupying, reoccupying Lebanon? And that's what the reports are coming out, that they're planning a uh, land invasion. And before I went to sleep last night, 
the reports were that the ground invasion uh, has begun. So mm -hmm. I haven't seen any more reports, but we, you know, we don't get everything. So that is that is the biggest concern is what is going to happen next. And they just continue to pummel Beirut. And now there were reports of them hitting hospitals and clinics in southern Lebanon. Like, are we seeing a repeat of Gaza mm -hmm. and why? And so just finally, what are, what are your plans now? You said you were waiting to see how the situation goes. How long do you intend to stay in Dubai? I've given myself two weeks uh, in Dubai because obviously it's not, it's a costly exercise. It's a very expensive city. Um, and I'm just going to stay in daily contact with friends and relatives to see and read the news. I mean, that's my job is to con continuously read the news and and share that on my platforms. But if, if it's going to be a protracted um, conflict, um, I'll be heading home to Sydney, you know, in the next week and a half. Yeah. Daisy, thank you so much for speaking with us and sharing your story and all the best. Thank you for paying interest to it and continuing to report the truth. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks. Fiona. Thanks, Daisy.